Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Days. I'm Wanda. We're in the Deep South Kitchen and today is another shelf stable pantry item dish. Using your shelf stable um, foods to create a dish that is something that you're used to having around a, when you have plenty to go to the grocery store and buy, but we're using things that were in the cabinet. So this collaboration was started by Mary Ellen over at Prepper Potpourri. There's going to be um, a card in the information card. So there's going to be a link in the description below. So you can check out all the women and men that are making dishes from shelf-stable pantry items. This has been going on for a couple of months. The first Tuesday of every month in May and June and now in July. We've all put up items from our pantry that we make something from. Um, today I'm doing gumbo. Okay, I am not Cajun. I am not Creole. I am not from Louisiana. I am from Mississippi, but Mississippi likes their gumbo too. So I had to do a little studying on gumbo. What started it was last month we had tomatoes, okra, peppers, onions. You know, we had all kinds of stuff and and I've made salsa and I've made uh, tomato sauce and I've made tomato juice and we've made all this throughout the years. Each year I kind of change up what we do. We've made ketchup. So this year, um, Danny said, how are you going to preserve the tomatoes? And I said, we have plenty of okra. I said, tomatoes and okra. That goes together. It makes great in soups and gumbos. Well, for this collaboration, I'm going to be using some of my tomatoes and okra and onions and stuff that I put up. It's already ready, you know, and the deal is you can buy a can of tomatoes and okra in the store. So if you want to buy cans and stash them up for your gumbos, that's all right, but I have my own. I made my own what I like in it. It came from my place. I know what's in my gumbo, but if you don't have a canned jar of tomatoes and onions and uh, okra go buy a can now we have our own chicken here we've processed quite a few chickens I have chicken here this is thigh meat that I took off the bone and the rest is chicken broth last night I cooked some um, wings and I baked them and all this juice came off of them and I'm not throwing it away it wasn't enough to make my gumbo so I'm gonna add this and the meat here now if you don't have your own chicken and stuff like that all you got to do is buy cans of chicken, already canned. That can be your shelf stable item, canned chicken. If you like uh, sausage and stuff like that in it, you can buy canned sausage cans. I'm not big on that stuff, but if that's all that you can do, buy it and make your gumbo. Now, most people cut up sausage or undo andouille and put in it. I don't have sausage right now, so I'm not putting sausage in it. I have patty sausage and I could take and take that and brown it and put in it but today we're not doing that because I'd have to thaw it out it's in the freezer um, so options if you have patty sausage hey wait I forgot hold on I just remembered I have some patty sausage in a jar that I canned like I can my ground beef I canned patty sausage but if you have canned sausage that is perfect use it uh, most people do not use ground sausage, but in a pickle and it's shelf stable, you got to have something to eat now and you got to use what's on your shelves. Think outside the box. So I've had many people ask about making a roux that is gluten free. Today we're going to be using cassava flour, Bob's Red Mill, and I'm going to be using lard. All the information I said, lard gives it a little bit more flavor and lard is shelf stable. Now if you have olive oil or whatever kind of oil, Crisco, whatever you got to use to make your roux that is fine and dandy. Now you can use any type of flour that you want and many people have asked about gluten-free. That's why I'm doing the cassava today. Uh, I have used um, almond flour, rice flour, a variety to make a roux. Um, but all-purpose, um, lots of people use self-rising. Just make a roux. Now, if you're in Louisiana, you're going to be saying, this woman don't know how to make anything gumbo. And you'll be right. I'm not a gumbo expert. So I had to do a little research because I did onions, tomatoes, 
and okra in my jar and I'm thinking gumbo sounds really good. Well, I went and looked up a few people on their gumbo recipes and y'all, they don't use tomatoes because they're Cajun. Okay, so one of them was Miss Lippy. Miss Lippy made gumbo and I'm gonna link her dis um, video in the cards and I'm gonna put it in the description. She made gumbo. She is Cajun and she made Cajun gumbo. Cajuns don't use tomatoes in their gumbo. I also went to Bruce Mitchell's Bayou Gumbo on Blackstone Griddles. Y'all, the man is amazing on a griddle making gumbo, but also is Cajun, so no tomatoes. He did everything on a griddle, and I was amazed, and I'd love to do it that way, but sorry guys, y'all gotta go watch him. Bruce is amazing. So, two people, they were both Cajun, neither one of them used tomatoes and i'm going oh did i mess up by putting tomatoes and okra together because we always do tomatoes and okra so i did a little research does gumbo have tomatoes in it cajuns no creoles yes so we're doing a creole gumbo i guess creoles usually put tomatoes not all but some use the tomatoes mainly because they used shellfish more and the tomatoes kind of enhanced the flavor where the Cajun gumbo was more sausage, shrimp, and chicken. And they didn't need the tomatoes. But mine, kind of gonna be a combo of Cajun, Creole. We are using what we have on hand. So mine will have tomatoes and okra and onions. It will have chicken because that's what I have. So ours is going to be very limited and y'all, I got a secret ingredient. I got Miss Lippy's Bayou Blends Swamp Mix right here. Y'all look at that. So we're going to be using the swamp mix. Now what gumbo would be even close to being right except you got to have your sassafras leaves. When it's done and we're going to be bowling it up, we're going to use filet, filet gumbo, y'all. This goes in, in after you cook it, not before because it will make it stringy. Didn't know that. I made gumbo a few times, added this, and yeah, it was a little bit on the stringy side, so I didn't know. Truly, you put it on afterward, stir it in, that's where you get your flavor. So we're going to try this with shelf-stable items. All right, I have my uh, cast iron skillet thing here, and I prefer this one. I fell in love with this skillet here. Now I'm going to put a good bit of lard in here, and we're going to get it really hot and melt it down. Now, some people do this in the oven. Miss Lippy made her roux in the oven. Um, Bruce made his on the griddle, and... I'm talking amazing. If I could do it like Bruce did, I would probably try it right here on this instead of a griddle. But I got to do it one this way. And for me, it is melting down some lard, getting it really, really hot. And this was one big tablespoon of lard in here. And like Mississippi says, your kitchen do you. My kitchen, we doing me. So, what I'm doing, I've melted my lard down. I'm getting my skillet kind of hot. I've got half a cup of um, cassava flour. Now, I'm not sure I'm adding all of it at one time. I'm going to add some. I have my handy-dandy little whisk. This is from Pampered Chef. I, I don't remember what it's called, a mini whisk. I don't know if it's called a mini whisk. I don't really know, but see how it's made? I just like it. So, this is getting hot. I'm going to add about a quarter of it. Yeah, it's getting hot. Okay, we're going to add a little more because it's not as thick as I want it. And... You could just, sometimes you just got to have a feel for this stuff. Now 
And what this whisk does is it blends it. You don't want lumpy roux. We're going to add a little bit more. And a roux is a thickener. You see, it's looking pretty nice. We'll go just a touch more. And I think we're about there because it's looking. Let me show you with this. You see the consistency? That's what we're wanting. Now you don't want to walk off and leave this. What you want is this to brown. And both Lippy and Bruce called it a chocolate roux. Now, to get a chocolate, you got to almost burn it. But if you burn it, you done gone too far. So you don't want to walk off from it. And see, so you want it pretty even, and it looks like it's getting there. Now, you could stop at this stage. It's a light, creamy brown. If you just, that's all you want, it is a light roux, this is perfect. We're going to the darker roux, and it doesn't take long this way. Now, in the oven, it takes a while. It takes about, I think, 30 minutes in an oven. And on the griddle, it took Bruce just five minutes or so. But on the, uh, on the griddle, Bruce uh, did the flour with no oil, no nothing, and then added the oil. I added the oil and the flour and then browning. So always different ways to do it. Bring that side around. And you see it's getting there. Now my skillet's still hot. And I'm going to turn it down or turn it off. And you see it's turning really brown. I turned the skillet off because iron holds heat. And if you can't make a roux like this, there's always kitchen bouquet. It turns it brown for you. But I can smell mine and I can tell if I don't keep stirring, I will burn it. Okay, so we're done. We're taking it off the heat. That is some pretty chocolatey looking. I mean, y'all look at that. It's not on the fire and it's continuing to brown and I know the camera probably is not doing it justice because this is really a dark brown. All right, you can see how dark and rich this chocolate. It almost looks like chocolate. It's not chocolate, guys. This is my roux. And the roux is used for thickener and flavor. All right, we're using just a small stock pot here because I'm not making a huge amount. And we've added our roux. I have my gumbo mix that I just put up last week. And y'all, it's got tomatoes, okra, onions, peppers. So I don't have to cut all that stuff up. If you were making gumbo the original way, you'd be cutting that stuff up. This is from last night where I um, baked chicken. And look at that good gel. Isn't that amazing? All that chicken goodness. All right, this is my chicken thighs from 21. The meat and more broth. I'm gonna add all that goodness. We're gonna add salt and pepper. Stir it around.
and let that chicken cook down. Now we're adding Miss Slippy's Bayou Blend. Now you can add as much seasoning as you want, as little seasoning as you want. It is up to you. But I'm adding three teaspoons right now. We'll check it after a while, and if it needs more, we'll do more. Now all this stuff is done. So all we've got to do is bring this up to a boil and it's ready to eat, guys. That's all there is to it. Just dumping it all in there, making sure it gets to the flavors you want, add any seasonings you want um, to make it taste right. Now we've got to cook rice. Your shelf stable item of rice, I'm using basmati. We're gonna put some of that on and uh, you can make cornbreads, you, whatever you want to use it. Crackers, if you just want this and crackers, your stuff is shelf stable. You have a pot ready to cook rice. This is basmati rice from McCaskill Family Farms in Missouri. Uh, you can buy it online. I'll try to put a link in the description below. Um, I am not an affiliate of theirs, so I am not getting anything from this. I'm just telling you this is some good rice. It's grown in the United States. It's basmati, one of the only uh, gluten-free rices I found grown in the United States. So we're going to put a, our rice on while our gumbo is heating up. All right, guys, I've got Danny in here. He taste tested. He said I had a little bit too much uh, tomatoey taste, so we added a touch of sugar, like a couple of what, maybe two tablespoons? Yeah, a quarter cup, maybe at the most. Just to have it toned down from the tomatoes and he said I didn't have enough okra since I only had the one jar of tomatoes and okra I have okra in a jar this is from 18 and this is done the way I do okra with no water bathing no pressure canning still smells good still looks good we're gonna add one whole pint because Danny kinda likes okra in his gumbo and this will thicken it up some. So it's a good way to use your okra that's in a jar other than frying. And we're just going to stir that around. Let it cook for a while. And if you have freeze-dried okra. I have some, but I didn't want to use my freeze-dried okra because that is a longer term storage item than this which was done in 18. 18 this is 22 kind of needed to be used right so we're using our older stuff first and if you don't have older stuff like I do and you freeze dry okra use freeze dried okra just dump it in as is you don't have to rehydrate before putting it in just put it in there and it will help absorb some of the moisture in there and make it thicker Oh yeah, that's a lot thicker. And it looks better with more okra. Oh yeah. Because the little pint jar didn't have that much okra in it, maybe six or eight, ten uh, pieces. Well, this is Star of David, so it's large pieces. This is not uh, the little cheap, I call it cheap okra, the little thin pieces. Thin that pieces are, or tiny little pieces like you get, you know, with um, Clemson Spineless or, or a long cow horn or something like that. The Star of David is large okra. I mean, you can look, it's, it's big pieces of chunks of okra. That's what you want in a gumbo. Doesn't that look amazing? Let's try it. So while it's hot we're going to add some filet. Just a touch. Mix it up in there. You don't cook it in it, you just mix it. That gives it that added flavor at the end. Mm. And it's not gummy, it's not stringy, it's not, um, like most people think with okra, it's uh, slimy, not slimy at all. The 
flavors need to mesh a little bit because I just cooked it, but we're gonna let it sit for a couple hours. Try it again. Mm. Gumbo's better left all day, guys. Now that's a good gumbo. Made with shelf stable pantry items. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for inviting us to be part of your shelf stable pantry items collaboration. Check out all the ladies in the uh, cards in the corner and the list in the description for more recipes. Thank you, Pe Prepper Popori. Mm. Bye, guys.